Hey guys, Tammy here with Along for the Ride. Welcome to our channel. Glad you're here. We have a busy day planned today. We are going to do some meal prep, some freezer meals, and who knows what else. So stay tuned. So what I have planned for today is I want to do some freezer stuffed peppers, meatloaf, my brown sugar meatloaf, barbecue meatballs, a batch of meatballs to keep in the freezer. That's the plan for today. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to make meatballs. This recipe is mini meatballs, courtesy of Trisha Yearwood. So if it's good enough for Trisha Yearwood, it's good enough for me. All right, so we got four pounds of burger in here. Let's start making these meatballs. So, I wonder if I should use this hook or the dough hook. We're gonna go with this, I don't know. We'll see how it works out. Ooh. Yeah, this could be a problem. I don't wanna do this by hand. This needs to work. Keep your fingers crossed. Two pounds of lean ground beef in a large bowl or mixer. Thoroughly mix the beef, which does this does call for eight ounces of ground pork, but I am going to skip that today. So, in a large bowl or mixer, thoroughly mix the beef, pork, not doing, breadcrumbs. So let's do the breadcrumbs. I am doubling, so it says two cups of breadcrumbs and I am adding four. I think my bowl's not gonna be big enough. May have to switch over to my Jammer Ale Stewart bowl. Isn't gonna work. Okay, let's see, milk. One cup of milk. So we need two cups of milk. Sure, I'm adding to the problem or not here. We shall see. You know what? This isn't working. Let's go to the big bowl. Got my jammer ale bowl out. We're good to go now. All right, so we were on the, we did four cups of breadcrumbs now. Wait, did we do the milk? Yes, we did the milk. Two cups of milk. Okay. Now, a half a cup of fresh parsley leaves. It's not gonna be fresh parsley leaves and it's probably not gonna be a half a cup. It's gonna be whatever I sprinkle in here. I feel like we could use some Italian seasoning in this too. It's not in the recipe, but it sounds good. Let's do that. Cause everything's good with Italian seasoning, right? And by the way, side note, my chickens have stopped producing eggs. So we are tapping into my water glass eggs. I will link the video when I did this. Garlic. Just gonna use my handy dandy minced garlic. It's about two cloves, right? Now this says when it's not doubled, actually this recipe is called mini meatballs, but I don't know what size we'll be actually making them. Recipe says that it makes 30 medium or 70 mini meatballs. So let's see how many we get out of this. We need some salt and pepper. Maybe some more parsley, more Italian seasoning, and the hard part. That's where the workout comes in, right? Try to take the easy way out in the beginning, but that failed me. Wishful thinking. <clears throat> Feeling some more Italian seasoning, parsley, Italian seasoning, pepper. All right, arms getting tired. Jeepers. All right, I'm about ready to call this good. Make them into some little balls and freeze them. Good enough for me. All righty, give this a little spray so they don't stick on here. And let's make some meatballs. And they may look like meat lumps. I should get my gloves on and roll them into balls. That would be, we may go back and do that. Let's just do some dividing first. Yeah, this is not working too well. It's too lumpish, not like a ball. I'm gonna go find my surgical gloves and we'll improvise. All right, we are back with the gloves. And the gloves are too big. That don't work too great. That's a pain. Oh well, we'll do the best we can. Not sure which is worse. The ice cream scoop or the gloves? Ugh. 
Let's just say they're not gonna be perfect little circles. Well, this could take forever at this rate. All right, I don't know. That's taking way too long. We're gonna go back to lumping it for a while. We'll figure this out a little better. Maybe my scoop was the problem. Yeah, I'm such a professional meatball maker. Well, now that's plans falling apart. It was doing great in the beginning. No, 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 no. Awful gloves back on. These gloves are awful. Oh well, we're calling that one good. You know, there's probably some professional tip like if I had refrigerated my, actually it probably says that, all right? Chill in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Shape into meatballs. Oh, why did you guys tell me? Why did you read the directions, Tammy? This is the problem. Don't miss that. Chill in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Then shape into meatballs. This is why I'm, I'm such a moron. Oh well, we're moving on. That makes perfect sense now. If I read the directions, it's always helpful. All right, I'm just gonna touch the meat now. I'm over it. Tired of waiting. For those of you that do read recipes and directions thoroughly, kudos, don't judge me. Let's see how many we got. 69? 69, and she says we would get 70 mini meatballs. Well, these don't look mini, but good enough. Go plop these in the freezer, and then we'll take them out and put them in freezer baggies. All right, so after those meatballs are done in the freezer and they're frozen, I'm gonna pull some out tonight to use for barbecue meatballs, and I'll share that recipe. That's what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. But now let's move on to making brown sugar meatloaf, our favorite meatloaf recipe. I'll show you how to do it. We're gonna do two of them for the freezer. All right, up next we are making brown sugar meatloaf. So for this recipe, the ingredients that will be needed are brown sugar, ketchup, ground beef, milk, eggs, salt and pepper, small chopped onion, which I usually admit my kids don't like onions, a fourth a teaspoon of ground ginger, which I also usually don't use, Finely crushed salting cracker crumbs, and we just beat up some cracker crumbs. A lot of times they're not even finely crushed, but by the time we put the brown sugar and ketchup on top, the recipe says to put it on the bottom of the pan, but we like it as a glaze on top, so I reversed that. All right, so we have four pounds of burger in here. It calls for three-fourths a cup of milk, but since we are doubling, we're gonna be doing a cup and a half of milk. Okay, it calls for two eggs, but we're doing four. Salt and pepper. It says three fourths a cup of finely crushed saltine cracker crumbs. So I'm doing a cup and a half. They're not finely crushed. It really doesn't matter. By the time you stir the meatloaf up, they crunch in there as you go. All right, now like I said, this is where I reverse the directions. It says to put the ketchup and brown sugar on the bottom, but we like to put it on top as a glaze. Personal preference. A half a cup of brown sugar and half a cup of ketchup, so I'm gonna double both of those. Now, I am using the um, Health Garden Monk Fruit Golden Sweetener, sugar-free, zero carbs. Try to cut down on carbs whenever I can. And this is something you could tweak to more or less depending on how much glaze you want on top. And there we go, two brown sugar meatloafs ready for the freezer. Brown sugar meatloaf, bake 350 degrees for one hour. All right, we are gonna cook up a bunch of rice. Pick this up at Aldi, Simply Nature, quick cook brown rice, this is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna cook up a big batch of rice, number one, we're gonna use the barbecue meatballs that we eat tonight, we eat over rice, plus I am going to do stuffed peppers and freeze them, so I'll need rice for that. So let's cook up a bunch of rice. One cup of rice to two cups of water. 
So it's twice the water. So let's just see how much rice we've got here and do the whole bag and double the water. All right, so we've got about four cups of rice. It would be about eight cups of water. A little bit of salt. All right, turn the burner on. Get this a boiling. All right, got the peppers, the ends all cut off, washed, and halved. I had green and red and yeah, just multicolored peppers, so that's what we're using. All right, so it says one pound of ground beef. I freeze the ground beef in baggy and it's usually about two pounds. I'm gonna kind of eyeball this and see what we need. One 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Looks like a tablespoon. All right, looks like our rice is boiling, so now we will turn it down. Reduce heat to low, cook and cover for 15 to 20 minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for 15 minutes. Your timer is set for 15 minutes. Dried basil. We don't have dried basil, so we are using Italian seasoning instead. Oregano. It calls for a half a cup of finely diced yellow onion, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to skip that. Three garlic cloves, but I'm just going to use some minced garlic. Had one little pepper here that didn't come out right, but I am going to go ahead and put some stuffing on it, freeze it, make it work. All right, so we have decided to switch gears. So I am going to add more sauce and put them in the pan because we like them to sit in sauce. It's always good to have them like sitting in a little base of sauce. So we need more basil and oregano. I'm just gonna do more Italian seasoning. Two cups of rice since we're doubling. So we are venturing from the recipe and making an executive decision. Since we like our peppers swimming in a little bit of the sauce, pour this over them before we freeze them. Or kind of in the bottom of the pan. I'm thinking probably a half a can for each one. And they are ready to go. All right, so these meatballs are frozen on the cookie sheet. I've moved some of them to a baggie to go in the freezer. And these we are going to use for barbecue meatballs tonight. All right, so we're gonna put those meatballs in the oven at 350 degrees for one hour. And in the meantime, we are going to make the sauce that's gonna go over them with the rice. Okay, for this recipe, we're gonna need ketchup, brown sugar, liquid smoke, and garlic powder. Now, as you can see, I'm using all natural golden monk fruit sweetener as a brown sugar substitute. Trying to kind of lower the sugar content if I can. All right, so first off it calls for two cups of ketchup. Now you kind of have to just gauge <clears throat> according to how many meatballs you have. Sometimes I'll go back and make another batch of sauce. It just depends on how saucy you want your meatballs and how many meatballs you're gonna pour this over. One and a half cups of brown sugar, so it's almost equal parts brown sugar and ketchup. Garlic powder, it looks like a half teaspoon, right? Got it, we're doing a dash of liquid smoke. I like to let the meatballs bake halfway to three fourths and then pour it over them. That way I can kind of gauge how done the meatballs are visually. If this doesn't take long to start bubbling, then turn it down and simmer. All right, so the meatballs are about halfway done cooking, so I'm going to pour the sauce over them. So that is the recipe times one. I have decided that I'm gonna whip up another batch of sauce and pour over, because by the time we pour it over the rice, the rice soaks up the sauce pretty good, and we want them a little saucier. All right, so there it is after we have doubled the sauce. Just depends on how soupy you want your meatballs. We like them soupy. All right, so there are the barbecue meatballs done. We are going to eat them over rice. And for a vegetable, we have leftover broccoli. So that is what's for dinner tonight. 
All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.